It's chaos. That having been said, a threat against a president cannot be pushed under any campaign. In the force, we all vote at elections and we vote for, based on our own thing, different, I guess, different parties. So there will be, in every unit of the force, I think, persons who would have voted for the party in government. And even if there are elements in the force with an objective to uh, prevent a professional investigation, it is difficult to implement, given that. What will make this country small? Everybody knows somebody somewhere. And that will certainly um, get out. So it's almost impossible to do that. And you know, reporters have to behave responsible. The media is extremely powerful. The type of influence they have over the public, over members of the public, members of different organizations, and so on, gives them a lot of power. Um, there are countries, uh, Rwanda, for example, where a reporter made one statement that caused a civil war in that country. It took years to recover um, from that. So we need to, with, with great power comes great responsibility, and we need to be responsible. As the minister said, if that television station makes such a statement without evidence, they need the full force of the law. The full force at a time when we are trying to build public trust, when we are making inroads in um, reducing the amount of violence within the society, the amount of crimes in the society, that clearly is a deliberate case to disrupt. So, sure. <laughs> Mr. Commissioner, now that you've seen the, or Commissioner of Police, because we have two commissioners in the room. Uh, Commissioner of Police, now that you've seen the video, um, has that video refreshed your memory in terms of the interview that you conducted? Yes, it did. And when you uh, made those comments to Mr. Leroy Smith to the effect that uh, Mr. Chase did not bring uh, the video to the attention of the police, were you lying? No, I wasn't. Were you? Well, I'm going to suggest that you were. No, it wasn't. The video was already in the possession of the police. I was not aware of it. Were you willfully blind? I uh, was not in all the reports that were submitted to me on this matter, both oral and written reports. Mention was never made. You see, that's the problem because I questioned you when you were supposed to transmit that memo to the National Security Committee. Mm -hmm. I asked you specifically whether you asked for the file to review the entire file, and you said, oh, that's not my function. That was what your evidence was a few minutes ago. Yes, it was. Uh, I still, and I'm going to suggest still... to you that you were willfully blind. You didn't want it to know what was in that file. 
That is not true. I'm not even sure that there's anything regarding that tape is, that is in the It case. was. It was. It, 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 look, Assistant Commissioner of Police Ram Narayan testified that he received the DVD and a memo from Assistant Commissioner James, and he transmitted that memo together with the DVD to Senior Superintendent Blanham. That doesn't say that it's in the file? Well, I'm going to suggest to you that it was. It was part of the investigation, wasn't it? I don't know that. You and spoke I don't about know. credibility being an issue. Yes. And that would have been the, a part of the issue of testing credibility. Uh, let me go back this way. If Gillard said anything there that he didn't say to the police, it would have been additional information. If he said the same thing that was said to the police, then they already has that. The, the, the tape becomes irrelevant. Or right, you got a chance not to walk back on your comments that you made about Travis Chase and HGTV 19 News. You're going to apologize? I, I will apologize. I, 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 I'm not Thanks, aware Travis. until this inquiry started. When I made those remarks, I totally wasn't. And if you were there, you did not say that you did that either. And I would have apologized even there. You haven't, I don't take that as an apology. You haven't apologized I, for the false no, information. Let me, Mr. Adam, before you speak, I don't take this as a forum for that. And please, Mr. Peters, just continue with the, um, the questions. Yes, thank you very much. Let's speak about David Ram Narayan now. And um, I'm going to pass to you. Do you have your police act with you? No. Okay, so I'm going to pass the police act to you. Um, section 6-1 of the Police Act, and I'm, I apologize, Mr. Um, Commissioner of Police, because I realize you, you explained to me earlier you need your glasses. Do you have your glasses in your vehicle? No. Can you send your driver to get it? Uh, if this is all that I'll have to read, uh, we can continue. Okay, very well. Well, six, Section 6-1 speaks about the role of the Commissioner of Police here in the grid. Yes. Uh, section 7 1 speaks about the role of the deputy commissioner. Yes. And section 8 1 speaks about the role of assistant commissioners. Yes. Right. And <clears throat> in terms of the hierarchy of the force, tell us who is the number one, the number two, and the number three in the force of, as it stands on March, uh, let's say, 29, 2017. Uh, the seniority list would read that the Commissioner of Police is number one. Assistant Commissioner Ramnarain is in number two. Um, I think uh, Assistant Commissioner Griffith would have been number three. At the time, I also believe that he was on pre-retirement <coughs> leave. And um, that would mean and, and uh, we have Assistant Commissioner Joseph, who is also on pre-retirement leave. I'm not sure if um, he would have retired then. If he hasn't, then he would have been the next person. And then that, that, that is number four. And then number five, Assistant Commissioner Hicken. Given that those two officers who are on pre-retirement leave in the functional capacity would have been Assistant Commissioner Hicken number three. Right. And so let's deal with number one and number two. Would you agree that Assistant Commissioner Ram Narayan was the functional deputy commissioner, given that he was number two? Was he acting in the position of a deputy commissioner? Um, no, deputy commissioner <laughs> is a rank, and it's a rank that is appointed by the, the president. So there is no one holding the rank of deputy commissioner. Is there anyone acting in there, that capacity, there is, whether it's an unofficial line or however you determine it? There is no acting in the public service. When you act, you get a payment for an allowance for that acting, and no one has been receiving that allowance. So no one has been acting. All right, so let's clarify the structure. So you're, you're the commissioner of police. Mm -hmm. And you're a constitutionally appointed position. Yes. You, you testified that Mr. Ramnarayan is your number two. 
Yes. And so you tell the panel, or sorry, you tell the commissioner, seeing that it's a single member panel, you tell the commissioner what, is, what are the functions as you see it of David Ramnaran? His um, <coughs> functions uh, as the assistant commissioner in charge of administration of the force. And while I'm away, he assumes duties of the commissioner as well. All right, so expand on that. How mm -hmm. does, what is the process that takes place when, Ramna, when you go and leave and Assistant Commissioner Ramnaran is to assume your role? There is a letter from the minister approving of my leave, and that same letter will indicate that Assistant Commissioner Ramnaran will act. And who makes the decision that Ramnaran will act? The Minister of Public Security, I don't know if it goes farther than that. Higher up than in, in the government structure than that. Do you, do you send, well, you apply for leave, don't yes. you? Yes. And when you apply for leave, would you say to the, the personal officer within the Ministry of Public Security, that's the, that's the person to whom your correspondence would go, correct? Who is that? The personal officer within the Ministry of Public Security. It, uh, memos from the police force goes either to the minister or the permanent secretary. All right. So you're, you're, when you apply for leave, because you'd agree that the permanent secretary has operational control of that ministry. Yes, and those applications will go to the permanent secretary. All right. So let's deal with the operational aspect. Mm -hmm.